Richard Jones, we are in East London. Um, you brought me to a very um, poignant place in the Jack the Ripper tour. What actually happened here? Well, this looks like nothing now. It's just like a tumble down pile of brickwork. But in fact, uh, in 1888, this was the mortuary. We were mm. in the churchyard of St. George in the East. And this is the mortuary to which the body of Elizabeth Stride, her third victim, who was murdered in Burner Street, this is where her body was brought on the night of the murder. So that was obviously the mortuary in 1888? In 1888 it was the mortuary. Early 20th century it became a nature museum. In fact, if you're, uh, you're uh, looking above the door here, if we walk round to it, mm. you can see the old sign from it, it was the museum. But people pass this on a daily basis. And have no idea the history behind no it. No idea the history. It's, uh, from there. You can see it says up there, Exxon Borough of Stepney Nature Museum. Nature Study Museum. So and this is where Elizabeth Stroud was kept until her funeral? Yeah, until her funeral. So this is where, and this is where witnesses were brought to view the body. So this is where Matthew Packer, the, was he? the, the, the seller who sold grapes to, who he swore was Elizabeth Stride and a man shortly before her murder. He would have been brought here. People lined up to view the body as well. And lots yeah. of people who had no reason to see it just wanted to look at the body because it grabbed the public imagination that much. I think there's no better example than that, Richard, than the second murder, which was Annie Chapman's. People would pay a penny. Yeah. To look yeah. at what some blood yeah. on the floor. Yeah, I mean, even just a little track of blood under a sack under some sacking. Mm. Uh, yeah. And amazing, the, the residents realised oh, money can be made out of yeah. this. And it's, uh, but even even the whole thing, once, once it's after the second murder, things start to change. And it because that's when like, they get the letter. Yeah, <clears throat> the letter. Yeah, so it's the end of September. The letter. Well, the letter's made public early October. When that letter gave that name, Jack the Ripper, it caught the public imagination. And you had ballad sellers going around, you had waxworks putting up effigies of the victims, etc. Mm. Uh, and it became effectively an entertainment industry, as yeah. well as being a serious And murder. what, is that true, they were selling a million papers a day? Yeah, it, well, but maybe not a million, but it's certainly up the sales. I mean, the Star newspaper, which mm. had only been founded in January 1888, uh, it's, it's the Jack the Ripper murders made the Star newspaper, because mm. they realised the more they published about the murders, the more people bought their newspapers. Mm. So it became a press for them. Everybody started to sort of find that there was something in it for them. Yeah. The newspapers were selling the newspapers. The uh, philanthropists were finding that they could use the murders to expose the conditions in the area. Uh, you had, uh, say, people selling the, the selling bits of uh, memorabilia at the sites. The only people who it was disadvantageous to were the police who were trying to catch it. Yeah. It just overwhelmed the. How many? How many letters did they get? The police. Honestly, this we don't know. The Illustrated Police News so in mid-October said that they were looking into the provenance of uh, around about uh, maybe 300 to 500 letters. Well, it's probable that by the time it, the murder, or by the time of Mary Kelly's murder, there's probably over a thousand uh, letters. Not not all of them were signed Jack the Ripper. Some of them were just hoax letters. Thing. Others were offering suggestions, saying you should be doing this, you should be doing yeah. here. Others were saying, you know, I think my husband's Jack the Ripper. I think my best friend, mm. my next door neighbour. But of course it didn't just stop there, it carried on for the next, uh, in fact, uh, I, I've got records in 1930s of villages up in Lincolnshire where people are getting letters from Jack the Ripper. And when, the, most times they don't find out who sent them, but when they do catch the people who sent them, it turns out they're just ordinary people who just yeah. thought it was a bit of a laugh. A bit of a laugh. Yeah, there's no, there's no better example of that than the guy, um, we said Jack, yeah. Yorkshire yeah. Ripper, John yeah. Humble, he died a couple of years back and uh, he evaded justice for, oh, 30 years or something, yeah. and uh, got a years, but he just basically threw the police off. And so people were doing that in Whitechap, people were doing that back in this, this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And it, when everybody saw it, I mean, there's a Welsh housewife called Miriam, uh, Miriam Howells who sent letters to, to several of her neighbours in her village saying, I'm Jack the Ripper, I'm going to come and kill you before Sunday. Uh, there's another one, uh, I, I can't remember the, the exact, but it was in Essex, it was, a, it was a village in Essex, and the landlady of the local uh, inn, she got a letter from Jack the Ripper, her daughter said she, I was crossing the fields and this man gave me this letter for you mm. and her mother opened the letter and it was Jack the Ripper that was a letter from Jack the Ripper saying I'm going to kill you tonight mm. and she called the police in and the police then thought there's something wrong here and it turned out that it was actually a daughter of a 12 year old daughter who had written the letter so, uh, it, but out of all the letters the one that has to be taken seriously was the George Lusk one because that came with a kidney Could that well, yeah uh, it's an, it, I mean that's got to be the most difficult one now because we don't have the kidney we don't have uh, well, we have a copy of the letter we don't actually have the letter itself because the whole thing is was that kidney the kidney taken from Catherine Eddowes now that's what the letter suggests uh, the police at the time and doctors at the time were convinced it was a hoax that it was sent by a medical student uh, where would you got the kidney from though uh, well the police believed and several doctors thought it was maybe a student had got it from the dissecting lab 
because mm. medical students obviously would study kidneys and they could have got it from a dissecting lab. Dr. Openshaw from the London Hospital, he was quoted by several newspapers that he'd actually said that it was the left kidney of a woman and she was a, it was a ginny kidney, in other words, it was heavy drinking. Um, yeah. <coughs> he, he felt that he was so miffed by that, he actually gave an interview to a newspaper and he said, no, I didn't say that at all. He said, I, right. can't, I can't say whether it's male or female. And he said, uh, I, I, I really can't. Uh, so the only thing that makes that letter genuine is the, the, the presence of the kidney. But it's also got to, you've got to remember as well that George Lusk was already getting letters. He didn't just get one letter. Right. I was going to say, that's more personal because it went to George Lusk's house. Yeah, he, he'd got stalkers. George Lusk was the head of the Vigilance uh, He's the president Mal of the end. chairman of the Vigilance Committee. And uh, George Lusk was in the newspapers an awful lot for those first two weeks in October because he was trying to get the Home Secretary, Henry Matthews, to offer a reward for mm. information. Now, the authorities were refusing, so he then wrote to Queen Victoria and said, can you make your government offer a reward? And then he got another letter back from the Home Office saying, Her Majesty thanks you for the letter, but no reward's going to be offered. But because of that, he'd been in the newspapers a lot. And we do know that people were seeing them hanging around his house. There's a story of a lady, uh, Miss Emily Marsh, she was in her father's leather shop in Jubilee mm. Street, when a man comes in and says, where does Mr. Lusk live? Yeah. And uh, she said, well, I don't, I, it, it, the, 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 the treasurer of the committee, uh, Joseph Ahrens, he lives a few doors down, go and ask him. He said, I want to go there, I don't want to go there. Uh, can you help me? And uh, she said, oh, I've got a newspaper here. Uh, and it's got his address in, so she read the address out. Significantly, when she read the address out, it, it, it was his street name, Alderney Street, Mile End, but the, there was no number in that. In what she, what she read out to him, the letter that was sent to Mr. Rusk was addressed to Mr. Rusk, Alderney Street, but it didn't have a number on it. Right. So it's probably that man who sent that letter. It's right. Find out, uh, but because we don't know who he was. Uh, mm. uh, and again, when the description that her and her father gave of the man was the uh, whiskers, beard, uh, very much a pantomime character. So yeah. It's, uh, but, I say, we, but you're, you're right. It, it's the one that many people argue over to the day mm. of all the letters, even the dear boss letter which signed Jack the Ripper, yeah. uh, although it most certainly did come from Jack the Ripper because mm. whoever wrote that letter invented Jack the yeah. Ripper. Yeah, I, I think there's a, there's a joke which I often say, how do people know, how do they know his name is Jack the Ripper if, they, if we don't know who Jack the Ripper was? It's, you know, it's almost a yeah. bit funny, like Oscar Wilde, I can resist anything except temptation, but yeah. Richard, and we're, we're, we're off to the, we're going to do a few videos on you. I'm going to put all your links in on this. Um, I've studied the Jack the Ripper case for 30 years, so I've seen all the Ripperologists. Um, Richard, so your tours, you do Jack the Ripper tours? We do, yep, every, every night, 7pm, rippertour.com. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're there each night. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, they can do it through the website, rippertour.com, or the uh, Facebook page is Jack the Ripper Tours. And that's you? And that's me, that's me, yeah. Right, more to come from you, Richard, absolute pleasure. Thank you.